Hi friends, welcome back to Mama Tried. I'm Juliette and today I have another Mommy and Me meal prep for you guys. So I have a total of six recipes here today and I would love it if you would go ahead and hit that like button if you love videos like this and make sure you're subscribed with the bell notification on so that way you don't miss any of my videos. But let's jump into it. First, I'm preheating my oven to 400 degrees and we are going to be making some of the most delicious at-home chicken you can probably make. So first I'm getting my chicken breasts and laying them out. I've already rinsed them and I was against this in the past, but since I've started doing it, it's helped take some of the slimy gross things off of the chicken first, like while I'm prepping it. So I've started rinsing my chicken. It's so funny how you change, you know? But anyways, I'm going to lay it out and pat it dry with a paper towel so that way my seasonings stick really well. Now I'm just going to trim the fat off of the chicken and any weird pieces that may be on there. I get my chicken from Costco and it's usually to a minimum which I really appreciate because who wants to cut off a bunch of crap from your chicken before you cook it? Not me, but I do it anyway. Now I'm going to season my chicken. Right now I'm loving this Dirty Bird seasoning from Cosmos. I'm pretty sure that you can pick this up from Bucky's. I know you can find it online and if I can find it, I will link it for you guys, but I am just heavily seasoning my chicken with this. Now I didn't even say, but this chicken is for me. So sometimes I eat it by itself. Sometimes I eat it on a salad or in a wrap, but I like to go ahead and prep some chicken and keep it in the fridge to keep me on track now Luxy does eat this sometimes she loves the chicken but I'm going to be making something else for her this week so stay tuned for that I'm also adding some sea salt on it and some black peppercorn I'm just going to flip the chicken over and make sure that I season the other side and then we're gonna start cooking First, I am heating up my cast iron skillet to medium high heat. Now don't worry if you don't have a cast iron skillet or you've never used one before, you can cook the chicken in a regular pan and then switch it over to an oven safe dish or some foil, something like that whenever we bake it in the oven later. Now I'm adding about three to four tablespoons of avocado oil. In my opinion, I added too much. So next time I'm going to do just like half of the amount. Now I'm just going to let let that oil heat up and kind of thin out a little bit so it spreads all over the cast iron skillet. All right, now it's time to add the chicken in the cast iron skillet. So I'm just going to add all of them in and let them sear for about five minutes. And then I'm going to flip them over and let them cook five minutes again. Once the time is up, I'm just going to take that cast iron skillet and place it right on the middle oven rack. I'm going to let that bake for 15 minutes. While those are baking, I'm just going to go ahead and start on some salad wraps for myself. So these are going to be some turkey bacon, Colby Jack, mustard, salt and pepper wraps. And I just got some Costco bacon, microwaved it for one minute and I'm patting off all of the excess grease. I ended up having to help Luxy with something in between. So the time is already up. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove the chicken from the oven and let it cool. Back to the salad wraps. So I just have some romaine hearts that I'm trying my best to unfold. They just wanted to be really foldy and not do what I wanted, but it's fine, I made it work. So I'm just putting some turkey on, some bacon. I just have some Colby Jack Sargento cheese sticks. I forgot to get like sliced cheese from the store, which is fine because I absolutely loved this. They were so easy to eat whenever I did it this way. So I'm just assembling the little salad wrap I'm going to put another one on top and it's actually like a salad sandwich if you will I'm going to make four of these and to make it super easy for on the go I'm just going to individually wrap them in saran wrap and I love that I did it this way because it just makes everything so much easier these are delicious whether you want to make them for meals or snacks they're great for keeping you on track and high protein low carb we love that
Now I'm just going to make three more wraps, but with this chicken salad that I picked up at Costco. This is just super simple. Just scoop it out of the container, throw it on the lettuce wrap and put it together and it just makes everything so much easier. I also got the majority of my ingredients from Costco and I just did a Costco haul on my channel. So make sure that you check out that video as well. Now that the chicken is cold, I'm just going to cut it up and put it in some containers so that way it's easy to throw on a salad or do whatever with it that I need to do. And let me tell you, this chicken is perfect. Now it's time to make some breakfast casserole bites. So I am just heating up a large pan over medium high heat to cook my sausage. And I'm making sure that my oven is staying at 400 degrees because I'm going to be putting the egg bites in the oven. This is more sausage than I have put in my breakfast casserole, but I couldn't find it anywhere in my town. So I ended up getting a really big thing at Costco and I'm honestly not mad at it. So I'm cooking a pound and a half and I'm actually going to be using a lot of it um, for a different recipe. So not all of this is going in the breakfast casserole. So I'm just going to cook up the sausage first and then I will put together the egg mixture. So first I'm cracking 10 eggs into a large bowl. Now I'm going to be putting in about two tablespoons of mustard. I know it's a weird combination, but I promise it's so good. And I know that I make different versions of this every meal prep, but we eat this all the time because it's delicious. So now I'm also adding in about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and some black peppercorn and pink Himalayan salt, some Italian seasoning, garlic powder, and onion powder. Now I'm just using an immersion blender to blend everything together. Once the sausage is done cooking, I'm just going to set it to the side to let it cool. I'm also going to add just a splash of milk to the mixture and I'm going to stir everything together once again. If you want to add any other ingredients to this, you totally can, whether it be spinach, peppers, onions, whatever you like. I have done this recipe so many different ways and I normally put spinach in here and I don't know why, but this time I completely forgot. Now I'm just going to be stirring in two cups of mild cheddar cheese. Now that the sausage has cooled a little bit and I have taken out some so I can use for my other recipe, I took out about three fourths of a cup and now I'm just going to mix that all together and it's ready to be put in some little muffin tins. 
Here are some tips for making the perfect egg bites. So each muffin tin is exactly one third of a cup. So if you have like a little one third cup measuring spoon, I would definitely use that. It just makes life so much easier. And I would 110% get some silicone liners. These are so easy. You just pop them in there and it makes the eggs come out perfect every time and I just put them in the dishwasher and they come out really clean so there's no scrubbing involved it's just super easy I'll link some of my favorite ones in the video description and as always if there's something in the video that you don't see linked make sure to check out my Amazon storefront I have everything linked there from my home products my clothes, Luxie's clothes, Luxie's playroom, toddler meal ideas, you name it, I've probably linked it. Now just pop those in the oven at 400 degrees for 25 minutes and they are going to taste so delicious. They smell so good just while you're making them because of all of the ingredients that are in them. So prepare to be hungry. And then with the rest of the liquid, I'm just going to be putting it in a silicone baking dish and just making the rest as like a casserole so that way there is no waste. Okay, moving on to the next thing, I'm going to be making some DIY pizza boxes for Luxie. In my Valentine's meal ideas video, I created this and Luxie loved it so much that I figured I'd go ahead and just meal prep her some. So I'm using a little circle cookie cutter, but you could use the top of a mason jar or just a glass in your house. You don't have to have a cookie cutter for this. So I'm just making four of those because I'm going to be meal prepping four boxes and then so there's not much waste I'm going to be using the little heart cookie cutter to cut out the rest of them I have made my own pizza crust in the past but today it's going to be super easy and simple I don't have time for all of that so these are actually the Mama Mary's um, pizza crust from Walmart. They're the mini ones and they come in a three pack. And I want to say it's like $2.50 for three of them. So totally worth it. All right, so I just got out some meal prep boxes and I'm adding the little pizza crust into each one. So I'm doing one circle and one heart. So like a regular size one and then a mini one. And I have my sausage right there from making the breakfast casserole bites. I just decided to do sausage because when I give Luxie pepperoni, she's not that interested in it. So I wanna try her on some sausage and see if she'll like that just for some extra protein. To separate out the cheese and the sausage, I'm just going to be using some muffin silicone liners. And I picked these up at Target last year around Valentine's Day, but they're heart shaped and they're so cute. So I don't know if anyone else knows about this, but for a while, a lot of companies were putting wood pulp or sawdust in shredded cheese to keep the shredded cheese from like forming together into one ball. And that ingredient is actually known as cellulose. So make sure that you are checking the back of the bags whenever you buy shredded cheese and make sure that it doesn't have cellulose because you honestly don't want to be ingesting wood pulp. I know it's all natural, but like some things you don't eat that are all natural, you know? Now I'm just using some extra silicone liners so I can put the marinara in them. Now I'm just adding in my Rouse marinara to the little liners. As you know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, I absolutely love Rouse marinara. The ingredients are so good. I'm just going to be putting some strawberries and blueberries on the side and that's it for the DIY pizza kits. Ooh, timer's going off so it's time to get the breakfast casserole bites out of the oven. Look at these you guys. They are so stinking good. If you're still here, we only have two things left. So I'm going to be making some protein waffles for Luxie. I absolutely love protein waffles and protein pancakes because you just pop them in the toaster that morning and they're good to go. Just add some fruit or some yogurt on the side and you have a perfect little well-rounded breakfast. 
You don't have to do protein waffles if you don't want to. You could just make some regular waffles, just whatever your favorite brand is. But I'm using Kodiak Cakes and I'm doing a double batch. So I'm just adding in some water and some avocado oil. You had to know I was gonna put some spinach in somewhere. So I am just loading these waffles up with spinach because you cannot taste them, so you might as well. I'm also adding in some honey and some cinnamon, and then I'm going to be mixing everything with my immersion blender. And honestly, it would probably be easier to just to put it in a regular blender because this stuff is pretty thick. Now that my little mini waffle maker is nice and hot, I'm just going to spray it with some olive oil and I'm going to add the mix onto the waffle maker. You wanna make sure that you don't add too much because it will bubble over and you'll have a big old mess. That's why I have that paper towel there, just in case. When the waffle is done, the little light will go off and it actually makes a really small sound when the light goes off and I can hear it for whatever reason. <laughs> It's probably a mom's superpower, I have no idea. So now I'm just going to continue on making my waffles until I'm done. While the waffles are cooking, I'm just going to get started on my last meal prep, which is going to be some little mini Lunchables. So I had some leftover Colby Jack cubes that I'm going to be using, and then I also have some Sargento uh, Colby Jack cheese sticks that Luxie loves. So I'm just going to be cutting those up into cubes, adding them to the containers, cutting up some turkey, and adding it to the containers. I'm also going to be putting some veggie straws on the side, and I also found some little made good granola balls at Costco. So make sure you check out that Costco haul because there are some really good things in that. And yeah, I'm done making my perfect little Lunchable. Now my waffles are done. Don't they look so good? These are so hearty and they just really feel like you are making something just very filling. But Luxie had one for breakfast this morning, ate the entire thing. I just cut it up into little handheld bites for her and put some sugar-free syrup on the side and she absolutely loved them. All right, friends, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps support my channel. And I am so thankful for any engagement that you bring to my channel, whether it be liking this video, commenting down below what recipe that you'd like to try, or if you'd like to subscribe with a bell notification on so that way you don't miss any of my videos. And I hope you have an awesome day. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. Isn't it my birthday? Yeah.